There's all kinds of activity going on in autonomous vehicles from a hardware standpoint and a software standpoint. A lot of companies building technologies that are ultimately going to lead to a world of autonomous vehicles. And 5AI Stan, your business, is really focused on the software side of this equation and building technology around this. What is your vision for an autonomous shared vehicle world? So we're going to see, I think, the biggest revolution in 100 years in how we use cars and how we use transportation in our cities. Um, so really, until now, it's been one person per car. Uh, the cars have been self-driven and they've used the internal combustion engine. All those three things are going to change. Um, so we're going to go to fully electric cars. Uh, journeys are going to be shared and to make it shared, they're going to have to be autonomous. So autonomy is the key technology that makes that happen. And that really is the heart of what we're doing as a company, is building you know, all the smarts that allow a car to sense the world and control its operation in a complex city. And there's all kinds of sensors that are going into autonomous vehicles, radar, LIDAR, perception, computer visioning type technologies. Yeah. Where does the software come in to making all that work together? Yeah, well, it comes in right at the front end, actually. As soon as you get those sensor inputs, um, you know, you've got to basically correct those uh, sensors. So sometimes if you've got cameras where it's very, very bright, um, or we just come out of a tunnel, you've got a, like a saturation effect. So you've got to basically uh, get rid of all those. So there's lots of processing at the front end. Uh, and then we've got to basically register all those images. So yeah, if they've all got different angles on the scene, we've somehow got to stitch them together to get a complete view. So somebody's very, very front end. And this has to happen almost instantaneously. This happens literally in, in, in milliseconds, basically, from receiving that data. Um, and, then, and then we need to then perceive what's in the world. Uh, we've got to basically yeah, label it, semantically determine what it is. Uh, so we've got to work out if it's a person or it's a car, it's a cyclist or it's a truck. Then we've got to work out what it's going to do next. Right, which is a big key point. Which what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? So you can't put cars in a city without being able to predict what's going to happen next in the scene. Yeah, otherwise, the, the, the cars end up having to just stop at every single point of negotiation. If they can't predict human action, yeah, the cars are going to stop. We're going to make our cities worse. So it's really, really important that not only can we perceive the world, which is actually a big problem, um, but also that we can then predict what happens next. Um, so we're working on both those two technologies to solve them. How do you think your technology is unique in solving that problem? Well, we're going to make a lot of use of simulation. Uh, so, so, yeah, so you can't develop and test this technology by driving around. It's just so rare, the conditions that you might see. So those you can create in simulation, really. Um, and uh, so you can really explore a much, much bigger universe of possibilities in simulation than you can ever possibly do just by driving around. So this is not like having a 17-year-old kid who's just learned to drive. You take them up for half an hour. Does it look like they can drive right done? Uh, <laughs> right. This is definitely, we really got to exhaustively test this stuff because people's lives are at risk. And the tech is all on board, uh, but we're also talking about technology being in the city infrastructure. Indeed. And yeah. that seems like a big piece of logistics to get cities upgraded with sensors and equipment to relay information to vehicles. How do you see that unfolding? So I think you can view this as like uh, two levels of infrastructure needed. Uh, firstly, most of the tech has to be on board. It's got to be on board uh, because we've got to move so quickly, we've got to take decisions so quickly. We cannot rely on infrastructure, wireless communications. It's, it's not going to be safe. Um, so the cars are going to be basically self-cognizant um, to be able to do that. Um, but then secondly, there are some things that is just generally helpful to know. So if we're driving a, to a, towards a traffic light and that traffic light is red, but the sun beating its way down on the traffic light, and we just can't tell very clearly what the state of the traffic light is. We'd quite like a beacon to tell us it's definitely red, stop. Um, so that, I mean, that's quite easy kind of infrastructure. But, but the world of computer vision, which is basically trying to understand the, the shapes of images and where they are in three-dimensional space based on camera images, which is quite a new science actually, is not quite ready yet for urban driving. So in the short term, it's definitely worthwhile us putting additional infrastructure down in order to train our networks better. And then later we can take that away. Uh, but for the initial phase, we've got to have this temporary additional infrastructure.